Welcome to our first orientation video and thank you for the purchase. And I'm excited to engage with you. And remember that you can DM me, you can post in the Q&A boards, or you can just leave a review. And I'm gonna use all of that feedback to make this course better. Now in this video, we're just gonna do a high level overview of the unique learning methods that the course was constructed around. Then I'm gonna give you a few recommendations for how you can get the most out of your time. Now the first learning method that I want to talk about is called the spacing effect. And the spacing effect basically means that we learn better when the learning is spread out over time. It means that cramming for five hours just isn't the same as doing one hour each day, Monday through Friday. So to try to help get the most out of this effect, I put together a schedule that takes three months to complete. And I know three months seems like a long time, but it's really about breaking it into a whole bunch of little sessions for three days a week, whatever three days work for you. Just remember that consistency is the key. Now the student schedule is also broken up into three broad chapters, and they're important because at the beginning of each chapter, you're going to find a link to an ebook. Now this is something you can read throughout the process or before even starting, but it's no code, it's reading friendly, and it's written in a simple Q&A style. And then at the end of each chapter, you're going to find the same notebook. And this notebook has dozens of working projects inside of it. We're going to go through each of the projects and point out the things that we learned. And each time we review it, it's going to become more and more clear. But it's one of those things where I want to just dive into the deep end, show you real working examples. And this will give us a concrete understanding of what we can accomplish by the end of this course. Now the next thing I want to talk about is separating the why from the how. So this course addresses all the topics, but in two different ways. First, by having a no-code discussion that explores the what and why, and then having a code example, a demonstration that shows the how, the syntax of how it works. So these right brain videos are marked in blue and they don't contain any code, but instead they're entirely English discussions, stories, and metaphors. These videos address the same programming topics. The left brain how videos are marked in black and contain code examples that I'm gonna talk through and then demonstrate. The important thing that you should be looking to take away from these videos are the procedures, the syntax, and the logic. Together, the goal of this overall structure is to prevent the right side of the brain from asking, what's the point? And the left side of your brain from saying that it's too complicated. Now the next thing I want to talk about is called the mnemonic effect. And as humans, we're wired to learn from real life objects, but often learning programming is not hands-on or visual. It's one of the biggest problems for beginners. I mean, think about if you wanted to become a mechanic at an auto shop, you could actually look at a wrench, you could feel it, you could touch it, you could imagine how it might fit into bolts. So we're gonna try to use mnemonics during this course to give that real world sense to the course. Now each concept that we discuss in this course is gonna be connected to a physical object, likely one that you've interacted with, but at least something you can imagine, feeling, touching, sensing. And once you learn these mnemonics, try to use these objects in the real world to trigger the programming concepts. For example, every time you're at a gas station and you're looking at a gas pump, try to use our mnemonic for a gas pump, which is gonna represent the concept of a function in programming. Let the two naturally connect. Now I wanna talk about the metaphor effect. So we can use associations that are already in place, your mental scaffolding, if you will, to learn faster. Now I tried my best to tie each mnemonic to a metaphor that explains some kind of abstract similarity, but admittedly, this is a conversation that's always gonna be a work in progress. So it's a great chance for you to submit a metaphor or a mnemonic to the forum, and maybe we'll upgrade the course with it. Also, with programming in general, we're gonna treat the whole thing as a mnemonic for writing because it's weird, even if we're not great writers, most people seem to have a sense for what the life of a writer is like. So besides these metaphors that are used throughout the course, the sections themselves are actually divided into three chapters. The first chapter is gonna be the nouns of programming, chapter two is gonna be the verbs of programming, and chapter three is gonna be the stories of programming. And I think this analogy works really well because when you have nouns, you're learning the objects, the person, places, and things of programming. And then you have the verbs, the actions, the way they can go together. And then finally, we're gonna put them into stories, into sentences, into paragraphs. Next, I wanna talk about the memory palace, which is personally my favorite learning method. Now, the memory palace, which is also known as the palace of loci, it's a time-honored technique for memorization. And it works by imagining a place that you know really well and then putting physical mnemonics, like the ones that we've learned from the other chapters, in this spatial arrangement. So after the what and why videos, you're gonna find bizarre stories that are all told in a single geographical location. Now, the place I chose was a fun location in Las Vegas, which also happens to be where 
where I live. But you're more than welcome to take these stories and place them in places that you know well, like your room or your office space, other places that can easily be walked around in your thoughts. So one final layer to all of these mnemonics and these memory palaces that we've been talking about is creating some kind of narrative, a coherent story, so that it's not just one fact, two facts, three facts that don't actually fit together. And even if they don't make sense programmatically, we're going to make sure that they make sense in just a fun story, an easy way to get them in your head in the first place. So after we're done with our discussions on the why videos, there's going to be a special section where I tell a story. And this is a part that's going to be updated quite a bit over the next couple months. These stories are purposely designed to make absurd leaps of logic, anthropomorphize objects, and generally address bizarre and unrealistic situations. Now let's talk about the Eureka effect. Now this is the experience of pleasure that we all get when we suddenly understand something that was previously incomprehensible. A problem where an unsolved puzzle suddenly becomes clear and obvious. And it's also something you get a lot more of as you become more familiar with any kind of material. So I once heard knowledge described as a place where the rich get richer. And to me, that makes a lot of sense because one new fact for an expert can result in a wealth of pleasurable new connections as all of the pieces fit together. But that same fact for a novice might just be some out of context fact to memorize. To go along with that, Einstein described learning as an expanding circle. And you can think about it as the bigger the circle gets, the more perimeter there is around the edge, which touches more unknown. The more you learn, the more there is to know. So try to keep into mind how rewarding it'll be once you've built up all of this knowledge and it's easier to make those connections because it's definitely lopsided. Most of the pleasure that you're gonna get from the Eureka effect is gonna come towards the end of the course. So the course actually has two different numbering systems. Top one is going to show you where you are across topics. And it's important to stay shallow the first time you go through this course. I recommend never going into the second or third layers. I say finish the entire course. Don't know everything that there is to know about types. Don't know everything that there is about loops and functions. But know what they kind of are. Get the top level view of them. Go back and then take the entire course again in a little bit deeper way so that what you have is a clear picture that's fuzzy and blurry that is slowly coming into focus. Now the final learning method is the belief effect and it's for sure the most important one because it's simply knowing deep down that you have what it takes to become a programmer. But it's just a matter of time, 50, 100, 200 hours. Anybody can be a developer. It doesn't take a special brain. It just takes a certain amount of effort from where you are now. And also remember that programming is a spectrum. There's entry level jobs, there's intermediate level jobs, and there's senior level jobs. There's all sorts of different ways to be a success. And one great example of this is that a lot of girls don't think they can be engineers. Here in the United States, it's a small percentage of our technical workforce. But take a place like India, where 50% of their technical workforce is female. And maybe programming isn't for every girl, but every girl is certainly capable of it. Now, this belief effect plays out in a lot of ways that you might not notice. So just take some time to remind yourself right now that you're capable and that there's nothing special about the people who make a good living as programmers that you can't achieve. Subscribe to the Mnemonic Academy YouTube channel for daily uploads that will help you learn amazing concepts through effortless associations.